All right, welcome to the channel for the first time viewers. Welcome back from my existing subscribers. This, I wish I could make this video in a better way, but other than holding my phone up to the actual monitor, um, I'm trying to use my capture card so I can show you all the BIOS when it comes to overclocking RAM. You know, I'm a little bit over a beginner level, um, but I know how to do my primaries and how to test it. So I'm going to pass this knowledge on to you all. Um, I wish the color was correct, but for whatever reason, it's just not coming through correctly. Maybe it's my HDMI cable. could be just a capture card, uh, capture card limitations. I use this on an Xbox. So um, let's get started, right? So normally you boot up your computer and then you mash delete or you hit F2 to enter the BIOS. Once you're in there, um, I do recommend uh, prior to actually trying to access your BIOS and tune your RAM that you download memtest86 that way you can test everything out make sure you're in advanced mode this is typically what msi's easy mode looks like uh, you click on advanced and you'll be able to see some of your options over here on the left um, i turn on xmp for all the second uh, secondary tertiaries to be a little tighter without me having to do it and then you go right to oc and make sure you tune your cpu first i just run all core uh, 4.7 gigahertz overclock it runs fine for me. Never had issues. Uh, I can run set bench fine. Run games, no issues. Right now, I'm using 3600, but I've also run some profiles with uh, 3800. So I got 3800 CL, uh, C15. I got 3600 C14, 3800 C15. Uh, I think it's 151526. 15, 15, um, so yeah, I've tried a couple of different things, and I had a baseline that was stable before I started uh, tweaking. <clears throat> for most people, if you're not uh, techie and you just want better gaming performance in games like Warzone, turn on XMP and get out of here. <laughs> so that's all you need to do. Just turn on X XMP. If you have the Patriot Vipers like me, XMP just doesn't work. It will try to tune uh, 44 uh, megahertz at C19. Now, the issue is not really the speed. It's just that when all four slots of your RAM are taken up, it doesn't, it doesn't turn on. So for testing, this is what I recommend. Whatever um, you're trying to roll with, whatever frequency, you have to go to your FCLK on a on a um, AMD uh, platform and make it half that. So 3600 divided by two is 1800. Uh, when you click on this, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. So um, this would be 30, was it 3733? I think yeah, 3733 would be red. No, actually, it'd be this right here. 3733 would be this. 1867 so 1900 megahertz is what i was running when i did the cl uh 15 3800 megahertz which was half so you want to make sure that it's half of the actual uh, frequency so you get the most out of it right next you want to go to your xmp like i said turn on profile one and where are we at now let's see and reminder this is after you've set your cpu um, next you want to go to advanced ram configuration and these are my timings. These are the main ones that give you the biggest jump in your performance. Um, so essentially, you want to focus on these five timings right here on AMD or Intel, right? So I'm using 14, 14, 14, uh, 28. And the way I got to this point is I just picked a set of timings that I found on another kit of RAM, um, which was 16, 18, 18, and 36, I think it was. And I just started lowering each one of these timings uh, and testing it out in mem test. So once you've decided which set of timings that you're going to roll with, um, I'm going to show you how you can start to test it out to make sure that it's stable for testing. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you use something like 1.5 volts. That way it can boot. And then after your test is done, you want to try to lower it each time until you get to a point where you start to get errors. Once you get errors, that means you got to stop. It's over. Um, either increase the voltage. Uh, I would say anywhere between 1.4 uh, to 1.48 is okay for most kits of RAM. You do want to do research. Not every kit of RAM is built the same. So do some research on your RAM and see what the tolerances are, what everybody out there in the community is using. Uh, TRFC is also important. I forgot the formula for this one, though. It's um, I'll try to find it and I'll post it in the description. Um, and then this right here are some of the, the uh, secondaries and tertiaries. This I found through a actual um, GitHub article. So I went through and just tested them out. It didn't really, to me, add much 
to my uh, performance, but I found these, like I said, in a GitHub article, um, and I just tried to tie them out, tie them down, and I didn't have any er errors after testing out uh, with Memtest. So again, we um, we would have our timing set with the DRAM configuration, and then you go down here, and initially I had set one point um, one point five volts just for the testing purposes only. I left everything else on auto except for my CPU voltage. This is what I've always used. <clears throat> so my CPU is stable at this point. Now, if you're if you've already downloaded Memtest, what you're going to see is your boot priority. This is my USB that has Memtest on it, so I'm just going to drag that uh, so my Windows boots off of that. And hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it lets me show you uh, what that looks like. Um, but once you boot into Windows, you can run this series of tests. I recommend test one or zero through nine. I don't do the memory hammer test because it takes forever. And I just want to see if I get any errors in the first nine tests. If you do get any errors, you have to go back and either loosen up the timings, which means increasing the number. So 14 is is very, very tight. Like these are very low timings, but I'm also running 3600 megahertz. Um, so for me, it's it's not that bad. Right. So it's not the end of the world. That's why I'm able to get away with actually booting at 1.45 volts, even though it's showing 1.46, almost 1.47. That's what it's actually using. Uh, but I have no issues as far as that goes. So all this is set. Let's go ahead and we will exit out. And it should, unless I get that HDCP error, um, it should go ahead and show us the the um, the mem test screen. So we're going to give it a second and see if it pops up. There we go. And again, the color is just, yeah. Couldn't figure out how to switch the colors, man. I couldn't figure it out. It could be the HDMI cable, like I said earlier, but who knows? Um, so here, it's going to finish booting up to mem test. You got to hit something, otherwise, it's going to automatically start the test. So we go to config. And all these parentheses let you know this is how you control this screen. You can just see like test selection, which is right here. So if I press T on my keyboard, You'll see the test selection and I can go ahead and unselect these last two. So 10 and 13, they take forever. Um, but this is a quick way to analyze whether or not everything you have set is good, right? So once you have these down, you can essentially go ahead and hit S to start. And if you get any errors at all, then you again would need to just stop the test because uh, any errors at all is not acceptable. You can't actually have errors. So you shouldn't have any. And yeah, so to run through this, the first couple are really, really fast. Um, if you see, like I said, once you see an error, you just go back and you try it out. You're on um, different timings. Either you went to aggressive. So the goal is you can look at different RAM kits. If you don't know what you're doing, you can look at different RAM kits that are around the same ballpark of the speed of what you're trying to achieve. So on Ryzen 3800, you can look at, you know, something that's maybe 3600 megahertz uh, CL16 and then try to get those timings. Uh, so 16, 18, 18, uh, 36 at 1.5 volts just to get the timing down. Um, and then from there, you could start to work your way down. I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I'm going to include the Excel spreadsheet that I use to keep track of each one of these tests. It took me a good, I don't know, five, six hours <laughs> to test out all the different timings and then make sure that everything was good. But I have a spreadsheet. If you've watched this far into the video and you want to get access to it, just um, just ping me, hit me up on, um, I was going to say hit me a lot of teams, hit me up on Instagram and I could share the link with you. Um, but as you can see, I still don't have any errors and I know it's not going to error out because I've already done this test. But um, in the beginning, I would get through the first four. No problem. The fifth one will have a test uh, or error. If you only have like one or two errors, in my experience, um, what you can try next is to um, essentially just go one step and increase the voltage just a little bit. So if you're at um, let's say you're at one point. 
for six volts, right? And you can almost pass all nine tests and it comes up with one error. Try 1.47 volts and then just kind of leave it at that because you don't want your voltage to be too high. Um, and especially double check the tolerance of your RAM. And there is a website called Typhoon Burner. I never used it. I actually use BDI Finder. And that's why I will only buy these Patriot Vipers and other BDI kits. Uh, BDI Finder is a website that allows you to punch in a kit of RAM. Um, so if you look in my description, you'll see the Patriot Vipers that I own. If you buy there, I get credit. But if you go through BDI Finder and you found another kit maybe on Best Buy, you take that model number, you paste it in there, and it will tell you whether or not that kit that you found is BDI. If it's not BDI, I wouldn't really recommend it. Doesn't mean it's a bad kit of RAM. It just means that the tolerance for the higher voltages is not going to be there and you may not be able to, you know, keep it stable at like more than 1.5 or not 1.5, but like 1.45, 1.46. Those type of voltages are going to be extreme to some of the regular kits of RAM, whereas B diets normal for everyday use. Right. And as we can still see, it's it's making it all the way to test six. No issues. I'm just going to go ahead and end it now uh, by hitting escape to and test and it says complete this is what you'll see once you get to a solid first pass what i did is i wrote it down in the excel spreadsheet and i just said the numbers the voltage the trfc um and essentially from that point i left um just a okay this one passed one time so what i did is i left the pc on overnight enabled tests 10 and 13 and let it pass through all four times. And this is how you can kind of tune your RAM. This is a very beginner level uh, stuff. And I know there's a lot of videos that did it better than this one, but again, this is um, this is just me kind of sharing what I typically do when I'm trying to tune my RAM. So let's go back one more time. I'll give you a quick run through um, just one last time. And we'll give it a second here, X for exit. And restart. <clears throat> Match that delete key. So two things you'll be doing first, you're going to go ahead and make sure that you have your CPU already tuned. If you plan on overclocking it or whatever, because you don't want to be changing your CPU voltages. Uh, it does impact your RAM stability. So once that's all set, you can go right through and you can um, head over to your OC and of course another piece that you would need is your um, Memtest 86 installed on a USB drive So I'll try to link a video on how to do that. So again, I just turned on XMP to profile one just to get some of these other timings in there um, But the FCLK needs to be half of the DRAM frequency to change that you can just scroll right up top um, with Ryzen it's kind of pointless to go above uh, 3800 because you have to factor that you're going to get a lot of instability with your your infinity fabric which is this F fclk clock so a lot of times once this gets past for me at least 1900 is is okay but running the ram at uh, 2000 mm -mm, uh, the cpu running the infinity uh, clock at 2000 and the ram at 4000 i just get all kinds of errors which is why my performance in the past was really low in games like Call of Duty uh, because I just turned on XMP when I had a 4,000 megahertz kit and it was, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know what it was using for the Infinity Fabric clock, um, but it was clocking the RAM at 4,000, no issues. And that was kind of, that's kind of it, right? I tuned it down to 3,800, um, like C16 back then and I had gained like 40 FPS. So it's a big difference in some games. It won't even matter in other games, but again, half of this and then this 1.5 for testing um and then essentially from there you start to work your way down until it no longer can pass uh, there's some settings that i can get if i'm not going for like tight timings like uh, c14 you can get some settings down to like 1.4 1.38 volts like where it's almost at the xmp levels um and at that point you're pretty much sitting there chilling Almost anything is going to be better than what these kits usually come out the box with. So even if you just kept your regular speed um, that they gave you, uh, let's say your XMP speed on your kit, because this is 4,400 megahertz. Uh, let's say your XMP kit was uh, 36 or 4,000, right? And you knocked it down to 30, 36 or you knocked it down to 38 uh, and just 
kept the timings and try to lower them a little bit. So you went from the 18, like this right here, the timings were 4,400, 19, 19, 19, 39. Um, so example would be you kept the speed, not saying you would do 4,400, because uh, remember, you want to make sure your infinity fabric is also stable. Uh, but then you knock this down one. Try mem test, see if it works. Then you knock it down another, or you knock one of these down. So let's say, for instance, you knock down the um, your second one. What is it called? Let's find out. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, all right. So the TRC, right? So you have your CL, your TRC, um, your read, your write, your TRP. And on Intel, these are going to be one. Right. So this is going to be one thing. And I did the same thing on Intel. So it's the same exact process that I followed. And again, hopefully this helps. It's a little bit of a tricky topic, but and I really wish that the video was not green. But I again, I can't figure out how to get the uh, the colors correct on this uh, EVGA works completely fine on the Xbox. Let me know if you have questions again, <clears throat> do some extra research. This might not be the only video you watch uh, to get a handle on this topic, but this is something that I watched probably six or seven different videos, read a ton of, of uh, threads in Reddit, and then I decided to test it out and started lowering my timing. Frame Chasers put me on to some of the B die. So I went ahead and got this kit of RAM. And essentially, you can see my first B die video that I have on my channel. Uh, I went from max to 205 to 10 FPS to like, you know, almost 300 FPS in, uh, in Warzone, depending on where you are and the settings you're using. But again, I'll let y'all in the next video. Be easy.